Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have this man back. He's been a friend of mine for years. You know, it's funny, Mark, because when we met, I think at Fair in 2018, I think is when it was. So five years ago now, if you can believe it. Um, I just felt like we were family immediately. Did you feel the same way or am I just an idiot? No, no, I felt the same way, Joe. And uh, I can't believe it's been five years either. Isn't that uh, something? But, uh, it, I think it's because we're kindred spirits. We love this country. We're both patriots. And we're not afraid to speak our truth. And we knew it immediately. And you, at that point, had become prominent nationally on Live PD. And yeah. uh, everybody wanted a piece of you. But I just felt like, you know, we were a couple of guys just going to hang out and talk about sports and stuff. It was just, it was interesting because I I, I have very few friends, Mark. And it's, <laughs> it probably will tell you a lot. Um, I just don't put myself out there much. But with you, I felt very, very comfortable. And you were very welcoming. me. And thank you very much for that. Um, in bringing that up, I wanted to bring up the tragedy that you just, that you just saw with your family. And when I saw it, I just, I was like, I like hit my knees and said, please God, let this not be, be happening. Sent you a text right away. And I got to tell you the strength that I've seen through the loss of your son and your granddaughter and, and your son's girlfriend, uh, Mark, I don't know how you do it, but, but I'm seeing you out there still looking out for other people. I see you and Janelle still posting and, and showing strength and, and, and some sort of, I don't know, this, this inner spirit that you guys have blows me away. Just you don't, If you don't mind, just a comment or two about your son and about the loss that you just faced and what it is to get you up in the morning to continue doing what you're doing. And those are all great questions. I first and foremost want to thank everybody out there for the prayers, the support, the love. Honestly, that along with our faith in God and Jesus Christ has truly been what's carried us through. I don't know how other people get through these tragedies without that. That's been what's kind of saved us and carried us along this whole way. Um, we just feel so blessed by the love and support of everybody. And, you know, these two kids, these were both uh, recovering addicts, my son and his fiance. Right. Our granddaughter was like an angel sent from heaven to bring them across the finish line. They'd been clean for going on close to two years. Wow. And, uh, they were putting their lives back together. My son had, had, they were both digging their way out of the quicksand of the judicial system only to have it just disappear like that in a second. And so uh, the only thing I would tell everybody is, look, you're not guaranteed a minute in this life. So take advantage of everything. If you've got relationships that need to be fixed, fix them. Things you want to do, do them. Um, because there is everybody for the prayers. We feel so incredibly blessed. Uh, Mark, I appreciate you talking. And it was a month ago. To was it really? I, I, I appreciate you talking about it. I know it's not easy, but what I've found through your posts on Instagram and elsewhere, along with Janelle, your wife, um, are celebrations of their life. I think yesterday would have been your granddaughter's first birthday or, or the day before, and, and I see pictures just celebrating her and how wonderful it is, and, and you know, uncle's holding her, and you're smiling, and it just you seem to be celebrating every minute you had with them. Yeah, we choose. that. Look, there's, there's that piece of depression and then there's sadness. We choose to be sad, but not depressed. Yes. You know, we can, we can sit in the corner and cry about it, which we've done, uh, or we can put our heads down like Buffalo do and go straight into the storm and we can accept what his life has dealt us and, and we can have a, a good attitude about it and, and a good outlook on life and, and try to find the good out of this experience. If there is any, we believe there is. And so that's kind of the approach we've taken, but uh, it definitely, I wouldn't wish it upon anybody, that's for sure. Well, I appreciate you talking about it, and I appreciate your strength, and I mean it, and you know that I mean this. Anything you want from me, you got it. Done. I know. You're good. I don't have a lot of friends either. I have a lot of people that I, I appreciate being around them, but my, my friend circle is very small, as you can imagine, yeah. within the political world and sheriffing, so... Thank you. Well, well, you're very welcome. Uh, he's got a brand new, this is Sheriff Mark Lamb, by the way, Pinal County, uh, Arizona. Brand new book out. It's a children's book called The Adventures of Seymour Clues and Mr. Mouse. And I want to get into that full throat in a second, but I can't not start with Katie Hobbs and like day one when she, when she took the governor's office. And I've got Carrie Lake on later this week. She still feels like there are court cases to, to be heard and that she still might end up being the governor. But as it sits right now, Katie Hobbs comes in and starts making changes immediately. Uh, did she either try to or did she actually defund some sort of border um, uh, tactical team? Uh, what was that about? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. The, the legislature last year allocated $17 million for border strike force. And that large part of that money is supposed to go to the sheriffs for us to be able to do the things that we do. Um, a lot of us have uh, an integral part with the state troopers, which is border strike forces through the state troopers. We work with them and that, that funding was supposed to help uh, secure our communities from the dangers of drugs and human trafficking. And she just took that away the first day. You know, I think it's a lot of it is because 
there her party does not like border security for some reason they don't like protecting the communities for some reason and so instead of coming in and talking to us and finding out how can we achieve taking the name out of it but still getting you guys the money she didn't do that she hasn't reached out to us hasn't talked to us just straight up took the money well the legislature is still republican though and i think that they pushed back on her did the money go away or she's just trying to do it She's trying to take the money away. I don't think she can take away the money because it was legislated by the legislature. Yeah. She's also trying to take away the money for the school voucher system, taking away the parents' ability to choose where they want to send their kids to school, which creates a competitive school environment and better schools, um, better curriculums. Um, she wants to take away that too. So I, I just don't get coming in and just rocking the boat like this, actually capsizing the boat is really what she's doing. Well, you'll notice that she didn't debate and she didn't tell anybody that she was going to try this stuff as soon as she got in. And that's exactly why she she was afraid to get on the media. She wouldn't come on shows like mine. She wouldn't debate Kerry Lake. This is why. She had a radical agenda the entire time. And Sheriff Mark Lamb, Pinal Ca- uh, County, Arizona, get his new book on Brave Books, bravebooks.com. It's The Adventures of Seymour Clues and Mr. Mouse. I've never understood, Mark, maybe you can opine about this. Why is it that the left wants an open border? I'm not sure I understand how how they gain politically because Hispanics who are American or Hispanics who came here legally don't like illegal immigration. They don't. I will tell you, Joe, I've said it all along. This is about the rule of law. They said two years ago they wanted to reinvent America. That was one of Joe uh, Biden's political uh, mantras. And he said he wanted to reinvent America. And the way you reinvent America is you got to tear down the, the backbone of it, which is the rule of law. What better way to do that than to open the borders and fill our communities with just people from who knows where? Right. Do you know, Joe, that they have arrested 40,000 people coming across the border that were either convicted of crimes here in America or were wanted by law enforcement here in America? 40,000 people Stunning. that tried to get back into our communities that had already been convicted of crimes. And so that undermines the rule of law. Then you add in the drugs like fentanyl and methamphetamines. All of that makes our jobs very difficult in our communities uh, because it undermines the rule of law. So for me, that's what it is. It's an effort to, to reinvent America. And you've got a guy in the White House who's clueless. Uh, I think recently he said 20,000 pounds of fentanyl were seized. That can kill 1,000 people. Mark, that could kill half the world, if not more. Absolutely. And there has been over 10,000 drug seizures in this last year. 10,000 drug seizures. Imagine the amount of drugs we took off the streets over the last year uh, that tried to come into this country under, under this open border garbage. If Joe Biden were to come to the border where you are, would it be the same as we just saw in El Paso? They cleaned out the entire area. He didn't see anything. You'll notice how safe he felt next to the big, beautiful wall, by the way, in El Paso. I mean, he went there just for a photo op. Had, if he were to come to you, hey, Sheriff Lamb, I'm coming to town. Show me what's going on. Where would you take him? I would take him to the areas where we're struggling with all these illegals coming in 50, 60 miles inland already. They're well within the borders of America, and you'll find all their camouflage clothes, their carpet shoes, their backpacks, the remnants of humans that were actually trafficked into this country, likely including women that are now in the uh, sex trade here in America or children who are in the sex trade here in America. I want to show them the real deal. They just, they gave them a dog and pony show out in El Paso and shame on them. And the American people should be livid over that. Yeah, I agree with you. It's Sheriff Mark Lamb, Pinal County, Arizona. Go to bravebooks.com and get this book. It's called The Adventures of Seymour Class and Mr. Mouse. Uh, one, one quick question about, about education. When you have a voucher system and you tell the public school you're not succeeding, you're failing, we're now going to make you compete harder for that tax dollar, that makes for a better educated community. As a law enforcement officer, aren't you happier with a better educated community? Because the lower the the level of education, the higher the level of crime, no? Absolutely. I was one of the strong supporters of this legislation anyway. I actually worked with them, did a video about it. We gave them the statistics that 80, I think it's 85% of the people in our jails did not have a high school diploma. Wow. So there was a direct correlation with people who are in my jail who did not get a high school diploma or who had a, a really poor education. So I was very pro Uh, given parents the ability to choose where they wanted to send their children and hopefully create a much more competitive environment. 
And by the way, the voucher system helps the lower income areas way better than it does the higher income areas. Higher income areas can already send their kids to private school. They can afford it. Lower income now has the ability to send their kids somewhere they never thought they could. I mean, this to me, it's racist to not have a voucher system, to, to be honest. Do you agree? I agree. But because they didn't pass it, they want to undo it. You know, and they want to force people to go. Here's the thing about the left. that They want to force you to do what they want. That's their that's consistent with everything that they do. It's about forcing you to take on what they believe, what they uh, feel, whatever it is. They just want you to believe their way. Crazy to me. It's Cher Barkland, Pinal County, Arizona. Cher, tell me about the adventures of Seymour Clues and Mr. Mouse from Brave Books. Talk to me. Yeah, it was an honor to team up with Brave Books and be a co-author on this book. They are true American patriots. They understand like I do and are passionate about our children's education. This is, I, I think your moral compass is usually defined by the time you're 10 years old. And we are now seeing in this country where it is more and more pervasive. They're trying to teach our children things that parents don't want them to teach them. So we wanted to give parents some, uh, uh, some truth and a place where they could find some good books. Brave Books does that. I partnered up with them on the adventures of Seymour Clues and Mr. Mouse, the case of the mysterious sea monster. Um, it really talks about local corruption, corruption in the government, and critical thinking, how children can be critical thinkers and find the truth. Because the truth is out there, but a lot of times you have to look into it. And I'm passionate about this book because I wrote it because I have two grandchildren, one of whom I just lost. So it's even more special to me because I did this for my grandchildren. Yeah. And I hope that other people out there get a chance to read it. If you go on and subscribe right now, you're going to get my book and you're going to get Kirk Cameron's book for free. Nice. Uh, plus, they'll donate $10 to Vets for Child Rescue, which is a great organization fighting to help save our children from predators. The website is bravebooks.com. His website is americansheriff.com. Uh, go there and, and sign up as well. Uh, I've got to ask you about something you just said. By 10, our moral compass is set? Really? That's what I heard. I heard a statistic that says wow. by the age of our moral compass is defined in us. And so if these these guys know that, which is why they're they're pushing this, these drag shows and all these bad books and 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 making books about the anti-racist baby and all these crazy things that they want to teach our children. And it's, they started in college, then they went to high school and junior high, and now they're just straight up going after our children. It is uh, Sheriff Mark Lamp in Al County, Arizona, The Adventures of Seymour Clues and Mr. Mouse. Go there and check it out um, uh, at bravebooks.com. Let me ask you about something you just brought up. You've got all these so-called family-friendly drag shows. No such thing. That's a misnomer. There's no fr family-friendly drag show. Drag shows are adult entertainment, period. Always has been, always will be. But th these are happening, and Antifa is showing up armed to, to block anybody from protesting. As a law enforcement officer, if I want to go protest, which is my right, outside of a family-friendly drag show, can Antifa stand there with guns and scream in my face and push me away? You know, there's there's the freedom of speech. They have the right to, to, to promote those bad ideas. Right. And we have the right to stand against them. Our job as the law enforcement is to ensure the safety of the people. But if you're teaching kids the things that are inappropriate, um, that is can, can be illegal. And here in our county, we will enforce the law and hold you accountable. And I hope that other cities across this country would stand stand tall and fight for these children and stop allowing this this nonsense to go on. Um, it's inappropriate and, and illegal in many cases. And again, you want to go to a drag show and you're, and you're 18 or 21 years old, I'm not going to stop you. You want to be a drag person? Be a drag person. Why do you need a five-year-old putting dollar bills in your in your pants while their parents cheer you on? This is really a parent problem, isn't it? Because if all parents said no, nobody would show up. It's a parent problem, and it's a conformity problem. Rollo May in the book Man's Search for Himself said that the opposite of courage is not cowardice. It's conformity. Nice. And what society is doing now is conforming to all these crazy things, the vaccines, the masks, these drag shows, and all this woke ideology, um, when in reality we need to have the courage. We need more Americans with the courage to say, nah, this doesn't seem right. We all feel it. It's just not everybody was willing to come out and say it. And, and unfortunately, you know, you and I are two of those people that are willing to say it. And yeah. it's not right. Not okay. It's not appropriate for children. And uh, that's why I partnered up with Brave Books. And hopefully you'll go check it out. Bravebooks.com. Um, you talk about border security, corruption, all that stuff. Look, these people, they, they allocated $412 million recently in this bill they passed like thieves in the night before they left office. 
$412 million for border security in other countries, predominantly in the Middle East, and they'd pass zero dollars for our border down on the southern, uh, on this country. By the way, the only reason that happened is because Mitch McConnell let it happen and the Senate let it happen. They could have stopped that. They could have filibustered it. They could have said no. And there are a li- there's a list of like 19 so-called Republicans that voted for that, and it makes me yeah. sick. It is uh, Sheriff Mark Land. Go to BraveBooks.com. BraveBooks.com, absolutely family-friendly book, The Adventures of Seymour Clues and Mr. Mouse. I-, I can't wait to get a copy of it, Mark. God bless you. God bless your entire family. And thanks for being that guy who loves this country and loves his family and loves true values. We need to hear from from you more often my friend god bless you too joe and you know i'm game anytime all right brother we'll talk to you again very soon we're back after this stay right here